So in order to repay the kindness of our mother, not only that we need to refrain from wrongdoing, we also need to prevent any wrong thoughts from arising in our mind. That your mind has to be right, righteous, clear. Only then you are able to repay their kindness. And with this fear of in our mind, we have restraint in our conduct. We do not dare do something that harms them, that hurts their heart, cause them to be sad. So what Buddha are trying to teach us in this is the power of filial piety, the power of love towards your parents. Mom, it stops you from doing something extreme, or something bad. It, it helps you to have restraint. If we go beyond that, how powerful is the virtue of filial piety? But Buddha has mentioned once in the Sutra, the driving force behind one's diligent pursuit of body, that means if you want to go full enlightenment, is filial piety. This is how powerful it is. Normal people usually takes, you know, a long time to be Buddha. But if you look at Amitabha Buddha, he only takes five kalpas instead of infinite or three big kalpas. That means he shortened the time. Uh, because Amitabha always think about all beings, he wants to build a pure land so that everyone can suffer less and quickly go to the pure land. And this filial piety, this heart of love and respect towards all beings, drives him to speed up his enlightenment. And also, as you perfecting this virtue towards your parents, towards every beings, so does your pro progression towards the perfection of body, which is the Buddhahood. For example, why do normal people nowadays, they all work so hard to get more money? Why? Because they were driven by incentives, monetary incentives or other form of incentives. Without incentives, they would not work so hard, right? To want money in form of prestige, especially money. Like, if I want to do business, I, my goal is to earn the money. Same for the Buddha and Bodhisattva. But the target of their incentive is filial piety. Because of uh, the urge to relieve the sufferings of all beings, he's driven to speed up his enlightenment so that he can quickly help them. But that's the intention. That's why Buddha told us, towards our parents, as our mom, uh, as more as we are perfecting our the ways we repay their kindness, the progression towards the perfection of body, which is Buddhahood, is getting faster and better. Amitabha Buddha is the best example. Why is his why does Pure Land, Western Pure Land, outshines the Buddhas of all? the pure land of other Buddhas, of ten directions, all Buddhas from ten directions, praising his pure land. He's, he even pray, they all praise to a level where saying that he's the supreme among the enlightened, supreme among the, the, the kings among the Buddhas, to that level, in, according to Infinite Life Sutra. That because of these achievements, because of his heart. In our level, if we want to live a better life in the next life, next existence. We need to have huge merits, huge fortunes. How do we have huge fortune? In Chinese, there are five categories of fortunes. Long life, good death, uh, yep. and all these fortunes came from Philippi, from a heart of love and respect towards your parents. This is true. This is the root of the fortunes of Philippi from love and respect towards your elders. A historical example in Han Dynasty 1500 years ago. It's a very long uh, era 
about 400 years, 300 to 400 years of uh, the, the dynasty's lifespan. It, beginning when the Han Emperor wants to assign you know, a role, like find someone to fill in the role of a minister, he begins by looking at the prestige, I mean the repetition of this person towards their parents. Are they being good towards their own parents? Because if he could or she could be, if he could be um, loving towards people who, you know, have been kind to them, then obviously he knows how to repay kindness, right? They will be a very loyal and very um, honest uh, officials in the nation. Han Dynasty, or well, I think including three, three kingdoms, is about 500 years in lifespan. There are very few China after unification that can last more than the Han Dynasty because Han Dynasty built its empire on the basis of filial piety. In Buddhism, this is why we have Siddhigapa Bodhisattva as the first step, it's the first example we should learn when practicing Buddhism. It's trying to tell us Buddhism starts from filial piety and respect. Buddhism starts from appreciating the kindness shown by others by paying them in return. Buddhism starts from respecting the teacher and their teachings. This is the and Buddhism starts from broadening the heart and mind. And because of this, we are able to liberate from sufferings. From here, we start to appreciate the compassion of Buddha. He told us the root, the first important thing we should grasp. The spirit of Siddhigapa Bodhisattva is like what we mentioned just now, like a big tree. Without root, how can it be stem, branch, leaf, flower, fruit? That's the root of our cultivation, basics of our cultivation, perfection of our characters. So, the education system represented by Siddhikapa Bodhisattva is perfect, well-rounded, no matter in the content of the teaching or the methods of teaching, the way they teach and the content they teach. It's perfect, it's well-rounded. We should know about that.